giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Five events, and unfortunately, one canceled event went down this weekend in the Best of the West region. We'll detail what went down, take a look at the FRC Top 10 as voted by Fun Nation, and preview what's to come for Week 3. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Aiden Ferrer. I'm Bryce Coucher. I'm Grace Rosenball. And I'm Alex Utziker. We also have a sweet giveaway for those watching live. Let's bring on our producer, Tyler, to tell us more. Yep, we're going to be wrapping up our rev takeover of giveaways today. So we want to give a big shout out to Rev Robotics and all the giveaways they've done today. Uh, so we're going to be wrapping up with the Ultra Planetary Cartridge 5 to 1. Of course, it's part of the uh, uh, family of the uh, Spark Maxes and the Neo Brushless Motors. It's the Brushless Revolution. Uh, so make sure you go check out uh, Rev and all the cool stuff. we got a link in the chat if you're interested in learning more about some of their products. But we'll be giving this away later during the show. Just make sure you are following the fun channel. Subscribers get five times luck. And there'll be a keyword for you to type in a little bit later on. So good luck and enjoy Best of the West. Week two had five completed events take place in California, Utah, the PNW District, and in British Columbia. Aiden, kick us off in LA. Sure thing, Alex. Well, 44 teams came into Da Vinci School this weekend, but only three would walk away with the title of LA Regional winners. Host team and defending Houston champs 4201 Vitruvian Bots and Hall of Famers 987 High Rollers both managed to go undefeated in their qualification rounds. But after 10 intense matches, 4201 would manage to squeak ahead in the rankings by the tiebreaker of 78 auto points. As the saying goes, real recognizes real, and 4201 decided that there was nobody better to roll with like a champion like 987. In third rank, assuming the second captain spot, was 1197 Torbots, who reached down to pick up the 19th rank 5124 West Torrance Robotics. On the Serpentine, the number two alliance would be joined by 2567 Chilean Heart, while the number one would pick up 6,000 Firehawk Robotics. The champs crew of the number one took down the competition with relative ease on their trek to the finals, while the number two alliance tore their way to the end of the bracket as well. When these two powerful alliances came together, the competition was sure to heat up. At the end of it all, the number one alliance would overthrow the number two alliance with match scores of 190 to 123 and 205 to 104, a fairly dominant showing by the number one in spite of the strength of the number two. Both alliances were rewarded for their strong showing, however, with the Auto Wild Card, 4201's pre qualification with their defending champ status, and 987's lifetime qualification through the Hall of Fame. All six teams in the finals would be awarded a spot at Houston this year. Congratulations to the winning alliance of 4201 Vitruvian Bots with their first regional win, 987 High Rollers, 6000 Firehawks, and the finalists of 1197 Tour Bots, 5124 West Torrance Robotics and 2576 Chilean Heart. We hyped up the diversity of this event last week, and while the All-American Alliance may have taken the event, it was the international teams dominating the awards game, with 8159 Golden Horn from Turkey winning Rookie All-Star, 5553 Robo Leon from France bringing home Engineering Inspiration, and 4400 Cerbotics from Mexico taking Chairman's. Congratulations to all the teams, and we can't wait to see you all at Champs this year. Moving away from California, 54 teams loaded into West Valley for the Utah Regional this week, with numerous top teams from all over the West in attendance. Through a long and hard-fought series of qualification matches, 14-10 came out on top with the number one seed, their adjustable climb and consistent shooting proving successful in locking that ranking in. In alliance selections, 14-10 selected the fourth-ranked team, 8, Poly Robotics, for their first pick and picked up 32-45 Ravens in the second round. The second seed, 1868 Space Cookies, opted to select 3374 Jackson Hole Ro Robo Bronx and 3648 Sparta Robotica to round out their alliance. Third ranked, 1339 Angel Botics chose to form an alliance with 2122 Team Taters and 670 Homestead Robotics. 
The quarterfinals went smoothly for most of the higher seeded alliance, with only a red card in quarters one, match two, for the purposeful robot overturning as a slight blemish. However, the number one alliance, even with their captain, 1410 out of commission, was able to pull off a victory regardless of the number two alliance. It didn't have a smooth ride playing out number seven alliance, 7905 Nighthawks, 3200 Rapticon, and 3230 Prototype X, pulling an upset uh, over three matches. Some crucial failed attempts by the number two alliance in quarters three matches two and three, combined with consistent double climbs of the number seven alliance, erased the power cell deficit accumulated over Teleop, earning the number seven alliance a spot in the semifinals. The semifinals definitely highlighted the power of the number one and number three alliances, with both of them outscoring their opponents by more than double in both matches. Even with triple climb attempts from both the number four and number seven alliances, the shooting firepower of the number one and number three alliances couldn't be stopped. In the end, it was the number one alliance of 1410, 8, and 3245 facing off against the number three alliance of 1339, 2122, and 670. The first match of the finals was evenly matched in autonomous shooting, with 1410 and 8 eventually overtaking the scoring speed of 1339 and 2122 due to 670, losing communications and due to strong defense by 3245. However, the number 3 alliance missed both their climbs, and with 1410 and 8 pulling off their clean and consistent double climb, the number 1 alliance came out on top, 196 to 103. The second match had issues for both alliances. 1339 only shot one ball in auto and disconnected for the rest of the match, but 1410 had a shooter jam after auto and ended up playing defense with 3245. In a one versus one shootout between 8 and 2122, both under heavy defense, 8 came out on top, and another round of climb works gave the number one alliance the win, 187 to 91. Congratulations to the winning alliance of 1410, 8, and 3245 especially 8 for breaking their 14-year Blue Banner drought. Additionally, congrats to 3374 for winning the Chairman's Award, 701 for Engineering Inspiration, and 8174, Titans Robotics for winning Rookie All-Star. 1339 earned a automatic wildcard to Chimps as well, so hopefully we will see them there. Cool, cool. The Canadian Pacific Regional in British Columbia is not an event that I've turned into before, but watching this week, uh, what really struck me was the strength of their young teams. Chief among them was second-year team uh, 7498, Wingus and Dingus. They, might, uh, they had a mighty debut in match number two, where they put up 200-point score and earned themselves three ranking points. It was pedal to the metal from there on, and they rocketed to the top of the rankings. They stayed there for the duration of the event, displaying world-class performances in each and every match. Despite the fact that they could only hold four power cells at a time, their drive speed and drive maneuverability made up for it. In the alliance selections, they picked out 3598 systematic eliminators and with their first selection and rounded out the alliance with 6486, 10 more tons. The number one alliance was looking strong and powered through to the finals in four matches with over 40 point win and margins in each. The other side of the bracket, however, was a lot less clean. Another alliance that showed the strength of young teams in the area was the number three, made up of rookies, 8312, Royal Robotics, third-year team, 7190, Vancouver Rainstorms, and sophomore team, 7787, Reynolds Raybots. In the quarters, a series of three tough matches led to a number six upset by teams 6390 Hephaestus, team uh, 6485 Mecha Mustangs, 7796 Breaker Robotics, then went on to win their semis matchup in two close games, the second of which had a one point margin victory. Unfortunately, the six seed alliance, unfortunately for the six seed alliance, I should say, 6485 was forced to play defense in the first finals match. Uh, not sure what was wrong, but they called a backup bot, 7287, sorry, es Esquimalt Adam, I'm going to say, for the second round of the finals. But the number one alliance was too strong and won the event with a final score of 194 to 116. Uh, huge congrats to 6390 Hephaestus for getting a wild card and a ticket to championships. Uh, also, the double silver cling bling of 6485, the Mecha Mustangs, winning engineering inspiration and the finalist award. And then the chairman's winners, of course, 3008. Team Magma. Well, on this side of the Canadian border, West Valley featured such a competitive event 
that you wouldn't even know that there were only 24 teams there, except for the fact that first headquarters had to make a specific adjustment to alliance selection to allow for backup robots. It became a seven alliance playoff with the number one alliance receiving a bye in the quarterfinals. Or if you're looking on the blue alliance, a 5-0 win during a match that happened to occur during lunch. <laughs> All other alliance selection rules were the same, however, and so it, it conducted itself pretty much the same as what you'd expect in any competition, just seven alliances. Um, but before this unique playoff setup, there were grueling two-match turnarounds with a total of 12 plays each per team. And coming out on top after these bot-breaking rounds were who? Well, they were 49-11, the Cyber Knights. <laughs> in selection, they snatched up number two ranked 2910 Jack in the Bot to return the favor from Glacier Peak last week. After picking up 6076 Mustang Mechanica, the number one alliance swerved to victory in the semifinals, beating the number four alliance in two, 225 to 104, and 210 to 83. In the finals, they met the number two alliance consisting of 4089 Stealth Robotics, 3663 Cedar Park Robotics, and 4104 Blackhawks. After two very high-scoring matches, the number one alliance came out on top. I was really impressed with the quality of robots at that event, and specifically the driving from the number one alliance. Having personally crashed a swerve robot into an innocent bystander once, I know that effectively <laughs> driving a swerve robot is an art form, and the bystander was fine, for the record. Uh, but 2910 and 4911 make that look really easy. Other than those guys, though, big winners for the event include 4980, the K9 Crusaders, winning Engineering Inspiration, and 4125, Confidential, on Chairman's. I also want to mention, with regards to current events, first Washington leadership was present at the event and spent almost the time, almost the entire time working on a safe solution to the event cancellations and public health recommendations that have been occurring. I want to thank them for their hard work and encourage teams to be patient. They're working as hard and as quickly as they can to let you know what's going on. And it seems like our producer Tyler has some words to say. I just want to ask you guys a question because you mentioned that they decided to go with seven alliances and therefore create backup teams, but adversely... That also means that those teams didn't get to play in the playoffs, right? So to me, I, I, I don't know how I feel about that, of that you essentially deny those teams from playing in the playoffs now in order to make them backup teams. So I wanted to get your guys' opinion on that. If they should have uh, just had no backup teams, and if your robot dies, you know, it sucks to be you, or is it okay to have the backup teams, but then those robots do not get to play in the playoffs? Um, I think... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think that... When you have an event that small, it makes sense. But uh, honestly, I think that there should probably be a minimum number of teams for an event that should be more than the amount of teams in the playoffs. Um, but obviously, I wasn't there. So what do, what do you think about it, Grace? Well, knowing how West Valley can go in the past and just kind of what teams generally come there, I was fully expecting backup robots to be called in the playoffs. I was actually shocked that none were called, considering uh, 2811, another team snapped a drive belt twice, I think, during the event and still played, which was crazy. Um, and I, so I I think it makes sense from an overall like flow perspective, but it's also got to be really difficult for the teams who were pushed into that backup robot position. Yeah, it's not an easy call to make, I'm sure, and I I definitely appreciate the uh, leadership in the area for for you know working the best they can to make those tough calls. Um, just having looked at these events, it always seems like someone breaks down the elims and and a backup is required from from just every event I've seen. I I don't think I've found one yet that hasn't had a backup at some point. So I feel like when you have 24 teams, um, it it's interesting because there's a good chance that the team that's going to break down on you in elims as the last team in the rankings which is probably going to be the one that gets picked up by the number one alliance and so you're forcing them, them to fight a 2v3 uh in in quarters or in semis so and that's making a lot of assumptions here but i don't think they're necessarily um untrue assumptions either um so i i feel like having backups and having that time to prepare your robot may be even more fair than forcing number one to take a uh 2v3 as opposed to just giving them a buy but who knows? It's it's definitely a tough call to make. Yeah, and it looks like uh, according to the poll that's going on in chat right now, uh, most people think that we should have had eight alliances without backups rather than the what happened, the seven alliances with three backups. It's definitely a controversial controversial decision, uh, but you know they yeah. made a decision. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before we move on, uh, is that another reason that was given, uh, Kevin Ross, so the guy who, we'll talk about him more later, but the guy who ran Alliance Selection, uh, and is 
a co-chair of the first executive advisory board, uh, mentioned that the first alliance, like the the uh, number one ranked team, the captain of the first alliance, should have a choice. I mean, they earned it. They made the first rank, regardless of death by serpentine or anything. So that was just one other reasoning I wanted to share that was going on. Yeah, so that's why we should go back to one through eight, one through eight. Good point for that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> IRI. <laughs> Good old IRI strats. Whole nother uh, conversation. <laughs> well, I feel like no matter what answer that they give it, uh, at those events, <laughs> it seems like it's uh, something worthy of a first fun rig in the chat, frankly. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that aside, moving down to California, uh, the Del Mar Regional was filled with action-packed and surprising gameplay all weekend long. After the qualification rounds were over, the first-ranked team was Team 294 Beach Cities Robotics, who had an average ranking score of 2.55. They picked up the second-ranked team, 3647 Millennium Falcons, to be on their alliance, along with Team 4419 Team Rewind. Taking to the second-ranked position was, seemingly out of nowhere, 5851 Striking Vikings, with an identical ranking score to 3647, but 160 less autonomous points as the tiebreaker. They picked up 5199 Robot Dolphins from Outer Space out of the 6th rank, as well as 2485 Warlords. Number 1 Alliance soared through quarterfinals with large winning margins. However, the number 4 Alliance proved tough competition for them in the semis. Alliance Captain Team 2945 Steel Mustangs, along with their partners 3255 Super Nerds and 6704 Mid-Pacific Owl Robotics, were able to take out the number 5 Alliance in 3 matches, and then the number 1 Alliance in 3 matches, earning a spot in the finals. The number four alliance faced the number two alliance in the finals and ended up having to go to yet another three matches. Round one, alliance two took the victory 141 to 132, but number four ran it back in match two, 175 to 143. In the third finals match, the number four alliance was victorious by only one point, 148 to 147, in a matchup uh, that I'm sure is <laughs> quite, that was quite a legendary match. I've seen a lot of people talking about like what could have made the difference. And there's quite frankly, a lot of different uh, bits and pieces of that match. So you'll have to go and watch that one, but oh boy, it's crazy. Uh, but it was in fact, the number four Alliance who was able to snag the blue banner. So congratulations to 2945, 3255 and 6704 on not only their event win, but doing so through triple reverse sweeps. Um, congratulations are also in order to 5851 for taking the auto-generated event wildcard for being in the finals as captain. Though the awards game may have been separate from the eliminations round, uh, there's also huge props in order to 8006 Cathedral High School on their rookie all-star win, 3341 option 16 on their engineering inspiration win, and 1622 Team, Spader, uh, Team, Spider, Spader, Team Spider on their fourth chairman's award win. Each week, the FRC Top 25 poll opens on Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific and closes Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific. We tabulated the votes and specifically took the votes from those of you who are in the Best of West region. We've created the top 10 teams from week one. Don't forget to vote each week in the FRC Top 25 so we can bring strong rep representation to the Best Region in first. All right. So this week we've got uh, in the number one spot. 987, the High Rollers. Number two, eight, Pally Robotics. 1410, the Kraken. And number four was 2910, Jack and the Bot. Number five was 1339, Angel Botics. Number six, 4911, Cyber Knights. Number seven, 294, Beach Cities Robotics. Number eight, 2122, Team Taters. Number nine, 1558, am I reading that? No, sorry, 1868, Space Cookies. And rounding it out, number 10 was 3647, the Millennium Falcons. So uh, what do you all think about this list? Any uh, changes you might have made? Any surprises? Well, feel free to call me out in chat, but uh, I think actually 2122 is too high. Um, I didn't have a chance to watch too much of Utah, but from what I hear, lots of connection issues. Um, problem scoring. I imagine those will get fixed later on in the season, but uh, that's that's my personal opinion. But the double-sided intake, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about Tater's design for this year. I'll, I'll say that right now, too. <laughs> I'm actually curious to know who is number 11 on this list to see if maybe mm -hmm. they should have moved up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but 49-11 should also have been higher. I mean, they're their driving was crazy. Their 
I mean, they ranked one this event. They uh, picked 29-10 instead of getting picked. And this is actually also their only their second district event win since 2014, which is crazy. Yeah, the robot is just fantastic this year. I definitely think I would move Cyber Knights up as well. I agree. Um, I think for the most part, it makes sense to me, though, the, the ranking. I, I probably would have moved 4201 onto this list uh, a little. I think they might be number 11, but uh, I don't see okay, that. Okay, so I'll chime in close. Uh, 4201 is 12, and oh, 3245 oh, uh, was 11. Uh-huh. So, but they were the, they were the third yeah. robot in the alliance, weren't they? Yeah, but it sounds like they played some killer defense. Yeah, so good enough for Don't forget that, uh, you know, what is actually on the FRC Top 25 could be different because these are only votes for uh, people in the actual region as well, too. It's a big thing to emphasize yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, I think the only team I feel is actually missing, which this is partly because of the event I covered this week, but Wingus and Dingus was mm, crazy 100%. strong. They yeah. do not qualify as they are not from the West region. Ah, uh-huh. that explains it. So they'll, they'll qualify for the FRC top 25, but once again, these are only for teams located within the best of the West region. Gotcha. Not just competing. Yeah. They, they perform so well that Bryce wants to adopt them into the West. That's region. fair. <laughs> yeah. Because international right now is struggling. Do a little bit of uh, fun gerrymandering for getting these teams into our region. I, I think that's in order. Yeah, um, I, mean... I, I would have moved 4201 up in place of 1868, though. I think 4201 going undefeated is uh they, they had a really interesting schedule and they still managed to make the most of it and then they won the entire event in a very dominant fashion so i think 4201 should be higher on this list yeah all right, all right. so uh what's uh our giveaway we had our giveaway first yeah we can start our we'll start the giveaway before we get into uh previews so once again from our friends at rev robotics uh we're gonna be giving away one of those uh, ultra planetary uh, cartridges of five to one uh, gear ratio, ultra planet cartridge on there. So if you're interested in winning, uh, we'll just do uh, five colon one because that's you know the ratio on it. So why not? Uh, so five colon one or you know five to one, that sort of thing. That will be your giveaway uh, keyword as we go in. So if you're interested in winning, make sure you post that. Uh, don't forget if you win, guys. Every single time people ask me this, I don't understand why you're winning something. We're shipping you something. That means you know <laughs> your name, your address, and if you want tracking information, if they send an email as well too. It's like nobody orders anything off of Amazon or anything like that. I don't understand, <laughs> but it, like seriously, it's probably like ninety percent of the time it happens. So please send us that information uh, if you win. And don't forget if you don't send it to us, we're gonna. Uh, Put, post it in our secret subscribers only channel and then they get a chance to win it so if you are a sub make sure you're taking a look at a discord because we actually gave away a couple things today from unclaimed giveaways as well mm-hmm. well week three will feature four events in the best of the west region at least that's what i'd like to say but it seems that we've had a couple of cancellations uh in the recent minutes hours and days um so alex do you want to tell us what's going on with uh, arizona north yeah, um, I was really looking forward to this event, but uh, as of about two hours ago, um, we got a email from the organizing uh, or the organization that puts on the event. Um, we found out that the 2020 Arizona North Regional has been canceled. Um, I was planning on attending this event along with many other teams in Arizona. It's always been one of my favorite events to go to. Fantastic venue. Everyone who goes is just so nice and amazing. Um but unfortunately, it looks like the event's been at least postponed. We'll see if it's fully canceled. Um, this is still developing, so we don't know yet if it's been fully canceled or delayed. Hopefully not past the end of championships, but we'll see. Um, team safety t- takes priority, so thank you to AZ First for informing us and for making this incredibly difficult decision. I just want to chime in, by the way, not in this region, but we did just hear recently that the Springside Chestnut Hill FMA district is also canceled or postponed as well, too. So uh, breaking just from uh, about 20 minutes ago, we just posted in our Facebook as well. Oh, boy. Well, uh, coming up next week in Wilsonville and the rest of the Pacific Northwest is sadness. Can we get an oof no <laughs> chat for the PNW as all events in the Pacific Northwest are postponed? I'm laughing oh, because I no. can't cry. Yeah. Uh, my stomach's going to hurt cry, all day after this one. Um, but a huge thank you to First Washington and leadership and the PNW for keeping us updated and working on this. I know Kevin Ross, who we mentioned earlier in the show, has been answering questions all day on Chief Delphi. I hope you had a lunch break from that. Uh, so 
and they were working, you know, I was I was at the event working as an MC and him and a couple other of the leadership in First Wall were working the entire weekend, an emphasis on the entire weekend, trying to figure out a solution, what's going to work best for teams, what's going to work for the event. Um, so they've they've been really dedicated towards this. Um, what we know now is that events are targeted to happen in the fall. Um, but we what we know for sure is that we can't predict what the fall or even really next week is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Aiden, how about we hear about Central Valley? Central Valley? Well, out in Fresno, California, we hopefully still have an event. I haven't heard too much news about that. But Central Valley Regional will be hosting 51 teams from all over California. Going into this regional, there are some clear favorites among the powerhouses like Hall of Famers, Team 254, the Cheesy Poofs, LA North winners, and the reigning Houston World Champions, Team 973, the Gray Bots and their world partners, Team 1323, Madtown Robotics. Some dark horses to look out for are 649, Mset Fish, who's had a pretty dominant couple of years, 1072, Harker Robotics, who's also doing quite well for themselves, and yet another defending world champion in 5026, Iron Panthers. Uh, we've also got teams like 5817, Unirex, who have had pretty successful uh, seasons, both competitively and in the awards game, and 5940, Bread. So all these teams have had pretty breakout years in 2019, and I personally am excited to see their performance this year. For Chairman 1671, the Buchanan Bird brand stands out above the rest, but still sure to be a close race. So we're looking forward to some of the highest power matches California has to offer. And I think we still have one more event, right, Bryce? Is that San Diego? Yes. Uh, sorry. It's uh, getting up right now, but I have it in Discord, and apparently it is deciding to update. So we're probably oh, no. going to have to move on for now. All right. Uh, All right. So we'll draw for the giveaway uh, while Bryce is bringing that up. We'll give him, we'll, we'll delay a little bit for that. Uh, so once again, five to one was the keyword uh, from our friends at Rev Robotics uh, for uh, that five to one ultra planetary um, as well. So great stuff with that. Uh, thanks Rev for taking over today. Don't forget uh, tomorrow uh, we have some uh, giveaways from our friends at the Thrifty Bot uh, playing with Fusion during the FIM recap show tomorrow. Uh, it starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern and then the FRC Top 25 which starts at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have a t-shirt giveaway from Sword Drive Specialties and a stealth wheel set giveaway from Andy Mark. Uh, but with that said, thanks again to Rev Robotics, and the winner is going to be uh, Absolute uh, Zenith. Congratulations. Subscribers coming through strong today, so lots of rigged emotes for our subscribers. I think we had a couple win that were not subs, but congratulations uh, for that, and thanks again to Rev Robotics for doing that great takeover. They're doing it again in just a couple weeks with lots of cool stuff, so stay tuned for that. And Bryce, let's check out the uh, next regional preview. Yep, so the 2020 San Diego Regional, which I also have not heard any news whether it's happening or not, so assuming it will, there will be a total of 58 teams competing from places such as California, Hawaii, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Mexico. 18 of these teams have already competed this season. Uh, of those teams that have already competed, there are several to watch out for. One of these is 6560, the Charging Champions. They ranked sixth at the Los Angeles North Regional and became finalists, earning a wild card to the championship. Another team, 2658 E-Motion, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. It has a sigma in the name. Uh, they ranked fifth and won the quality award at the Del Mar Regional. It will also be exciting to see the season debut of a lot of top teams, such as 3476 Code Orange, 4415 Epic Robotics, and 368 Team Kikamana from Hawaii. Uh, good luck to all the teams competing. All righty. Well, that's all that we've got time for tonight. So thank you to everyone hanging out with us. Don't forget to vote in the FRC Top 25 polls opening on uh, Sunday, which I think opened on Sunday is uh, what we're looking for. But you can find the links on Fun's Discord, social, or on Chief Delphi. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash firstupdatesnow, or just letting people in the first community know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Grace, Alex, and our producer, Tyler, I would love to thank you for, uh, I would like to thank you for tuning in and uh, thank our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on Best of the West. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon 
at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent. 